Hey, hey, internet land. It's Karanda from Carvel Digital. And I wanted to talk today about the automation ambulance and really share with you how to stop having to call it or how to keep from having to call it in the future, right? And this is mostly targeted towards entrepreneurs, right? People who are actively growing their business and um, people who want to be able to scale, right? To have more revenue, more clients, um, probably more team than you have now. And what I'm seeing happen and what I've seen happen for years and years is that you start out like young and scrappy entrepreneur, business owner, and you're DIYing your tech and you're going into Facebook groups and you're asking people like, what's the best, best tool to do a thing? Um, you're using what your coach told you to do, even your even though your coach is a coach and has no idea about technology, <laughs> um, you are using all in ones because you find the idea attractive that you could just do everything in one tool and you don't want to have to learn how to connect all these things together. All of these things contribute to you falling into the, the trap really that ends up having you call the automation ambulance. <clears throat> and before I get too far into it, let me go ahead and credit my mentor, Chris Davis, with this phrase. Um, he has an entire podcast about the automation ambulance, what it is, you know, who ends up calling it. So um, you can go over to automationbridge.com and you can check that out. Um, I'm going to take a second here to just make sure that this can all be seen by all the people. And if you come on and you're watching live, um, definitely ask your questions, say hi. Uh, if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay. And <clears throat> so Scott asks, are you saying the automation ambulance is a crutch? Um, it's not a crutch so much as it is uh, an emergency that you fall into because you end up in a situation where your business scales um, to the point of breaking, like the systems that you currently have all of a sudden are no longer working. And when that happens, then you get into a crunch where you are calling on people to try to fix those systems quickly because, you know, it might look like uh, you went viral and all of a sudden you have, you know, your audience grows by thousands and thousands of people. You have leads coming in the door. You have a sales system that's broken. Or it might be that you have a really, really great launch and all of a sudden you have, you know, 10, 20, 30, 100 new clients and your delivery and your backend systems can't handle that. And so that's when you end up calling the, the automation ambulance because it's like you've now gotten yourself into a pickle and now you need it fixed quickly. And the problem with that is that in order to fix it well, you it, that doesn't happen quickly. <laughs> Okay. So then it's just a really, it ends up being a really, really painful time where everything is out of whack and you're scrambling and your team is scrambling and it all could have been avoided with a proper foundation. So the first thing I will say is um, one of the main thing, reasons that I see this happen to people is lack of strategy. And so one of the things we do for our clients is <clears throat> and I, I haven't advertised this in the past because it's really been more of a secret menu thing, but I've done a couple of them and I just think it's so helpful in avoiding the situation. And so one of the things that we do is we'll do, I'll do a power hour with someone. So I just did this recently with a client who is starting a new business, but she's not new to business. Okay. That's very important. So she has had previous businesses and she's starting a brand new business or a brand new offer. And she came to me and said, Hey, I don't want to be out here guessing about what technology I need to build this business on in such a way that I can scale it to, you know, whatever her, whatever her dreams and goals are to scale that business. Right. It's not going to be like a cute lifestyle business. She wants to make big impact. And so she came to me and we spent an hour together and we talked about, you know, the things that she wanted to do and the kind of offer she had and the things that she needed to be able to look to deliver. And then within a few days, I was able to hand her over a document actually it was an Airtable base and it laid out here are all here's all the technology that you need to hire for your business like right now minimum viable so that you can attract leads you can sell to those leads and you can deliver what they bought from you and in addition to that i said here are some things you might want in the future but most of the things i gave her are going to take her to a million dollars and beyond there's no reason that she needs to change any of them um, 
<clears throat> and so when you do that, which is, you know, my philosophy is begin as you mean to go on, which is also the name of my podcast, right? When you do that, then yes, you are still, you're still going to have scaling issues, right? That's unavoidable, but your tech doesn't have to be burned to the ground. And, you know, we don't need to have like a Phoenix rising from the ashes situation. It might be that some things need to change in the way that your tech operates or the way that your technology is set up, but you don't have to burn it to the ground. And I've just had too many people come to me over the years you know, having invested in a shiny new website or having done all these sort of external things without laying the proper foundation. And then I have to tell them, you know what, we've got to rip this thing down to the studs and build it properly so that you can actually have the results that you want. So get a strategy. And if you don't know how to get a strategy, like message me, <laughs> you know, I'll send you the link. We can book a power hour and we can talk about what you're doing and I can lay it out for you. Because literally people have come to me having invested, you know, 25K or more in things that didn't work out, right? Either they hired the wrong people, um, they hired uh, they hired people who delivered them something that looks good, but actually isn't usable for marketing, um, all kinds of things. Like just a week ago, I got a, an email from an old client way back in the day when I was still doing websites and... Um, he was very complimentary. He was like, Hey, you know, this website that you built me, what it's like six or seven years ago is still pivotal, pivotal to my business. It's been so amazing. And now I'm trying to like update it, right? Websites need to be updated and your messaging changes and all those kinds of things. And what did he do? He went out and tried to hire on his own and that person is not working out. And now he's coming to me after having invested and wasted that time and money and saying, Hey, do you have any referrals? <laughs> right? So I just want you all to, to skip that part. I want you to skip the part where you go and you waste your time and your money doing things that are not going to give you the result you want. Um, and I want you to just like, I, I want you to do it right the first time and have what you want the first time. So get a strategy. Um, the second thing that I see that causes a lot of issues is um, your tech mindset is trash. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how to, uh, any other way to put it. Um, there's just a lot of trash tech mindset going around. Um, and there's so much fear. And um, Akila was talking, my good friend Akila was talking about this just the other day. Like, there's so much fear around technology that y'all will stay small rather rather than invest in the things that you need to invest in. And this goes back to another core philosophy about we don't want you out here buying technology, right? <laughs> like if you're just hanging out on AbSumo grabbing deals, like good luck to you because <laughs> you're going to have you're going to have a lot of recurring subscriptions and not a lot of results. So don't don't shrink yourself because you think, "Oh, well, active campaign is too expensive or I don't want to invest in that because like I'm not there yet or how am I going to afford that? The technology that you're investing in your business should be paying for itself. And if it's not, or you don't know how to make it do that, then that goes back to the strategy piece, right? You need to have a strategy for how you can hire these tools to do actual jobs in your business. Your active campaign account shouldn't cost you anything. God forbid your Thrive Card account... <laughs> you know, where you take payments shouldn't actually be costing you anything. These are the tools that you're using to make money. And so you need to have a plan for how you're going to execute that. Um, and you need to just stop letting fear make you small and then make you stay on like the MailChimps of the world or, you know, whatever other technology. If I see one more person in a Facebook group that's like, I need a free tool that does X or they're taking advice from people who have zero technology background just because you're in the same mastermind or the same coaching group. I want us to normalize to stop asking those questions in those kinds of environments. And if you must, if you must go to the group mind, to ask something, ask who do you trust to help you make these decisions? I want you to be consulting experts about whatever it is. So who do you trust to help you choose a CRM? Who do you trust to help you choose 
a website platform and go to that person and then give them context about what it is you're trying to do, because that's what's missing. You go into these groups and you ask these generic questions, which by the way, I have a whole podcast episode about asking better questions for just this reason. So it's episode number four of Begin As You Means Go On. And so stop doing that and ask, who do you trust to help you with these decisions? And then go ask that person and give them context. Like tell them what, where your business is at, where's your revenue at, where are you trying to go? Like the whole philosophy of begin as you mean to go on is to get onto tools and to make decisions and to build foundations that can last a while. I've been using the same core technology in my business for the last seven or eight years, y'all. Like, yes, I like shiny new tools. Yes, I like to go play with things and I like to see what's on the market. But when it comes to what I actually use in my business, it actually doesn't change very often. I think it's been three years since I changed our project management tool. And I was feeling unsatisfied. I went on this grand tour of all the all the things, you name Asana, Monday, all the things. And where did I end up? Right back where I was, <laughs> right? Until I got a new team member who suggested something different that we ended up moving to. So I want you to normalize. I'm just going to, I'm going to say this again for the people in the back. I want you to normalize asking who is the professional that you trust to help make decisions about this and then paying that person to actually help you create a plan that's going to work for you and your specific business. I don't remember who said it, but someone said, um, you know, free advice is not specific and specific advice ain't free. <laughs> okay. So, um, so normalize that. What else? Um, the other thing, oh, okay. This is, this is a big one is, um, you don't know what tools are for. Uh, this is a huge thing, right? People don't understand what tools are actually meant for. What, am, what do I mean by that? What am I talking about? There are a lot of tools that can do a lot of things. This is the whole principle behind all-in-ones, right? We can do everything. Um, but a lot of y'all don't understand what, the, what things these tools are actually meant to do versus what you are twisting them into doing, okay? And you need to start understanding that so that you can make informed decisions about, yes, I know this tool is meant for this thing, but yeah, I'm going to use it for this other thing too, right? And so where I see this the most is with CRMs, okay? Y'all are out here trying to use ClickUp as a CRM, trying to use Asana, trying to use Monday. Um, the, only, the only tool I would say um, and I've actually suggested this to my clients. If the, if you, if you're not ready for like a, a big girl CRM, right. And you just want to get started. Airtable is a great place to get started. Why, why Airtable and not those other tools? Well, <clears throat> those other tools are not actually meant to help you automate and react to things that are happening, especially when we're talking about sales CRM or marketing CRM. They're not really set up to automate and react to what's happening. And some of them aren't set up to even be able to email people at all, especially not in groups. So that's the primary reason. But Airtable is a lot more flexible. It's a database. It has automations. You can automatically email people from within Airtable, um, but it is kind of like buying like a box of car parts and you have to know how to set it up. But if you are a baby business owner or you're just getting started with the land of CRM and you just want to kind of like wrap your head around it, that's where I would say, that's where I would suggest going. And you could search their template database, you could search CRM, and you could find something, you know, to kind of get you started. Um, other than that, like if you are a multi six figure, seven figure business and you don't have a CRM, like what are you doing? And I'm talking about a real CRM. So what are the real CRMs? Active Campaign, HubSpot, Keep slash Infusionsoft, um, Entreport. Um, those are those are really the big ones, right? Um, and here's here's the thing. You could build out, you know, what looks like a CRM and those other tools. Um, and what I would call that is a sales tracker right? It's a contact tracker. It allows you to be able to actually see your contacts in a pipeline. Maybe you can do, you know, some other things. Maybe there's a little bit of email functionality, but again, 
we're talking about long-term and we're talking about building for you to be able to scale. And what's going to happen when you scale is that is going to break very quickly because none of those systems, you know, click up Asana Monday, none of those are marketing systems and you're going to need marketing at some point, right? Maybe you're in a business where you're just out here selling and that's working for you. People just go and they book a sales call and then they buy from you and that's cool, right? You don't need marketing, but at some point those leads are going to dry up or you're going to need more volume. And then you're going to be like, Hmm, I need a way for, to nurture these leads, right? I need a way to like have them be in my system until they're actually ready to buy. And for me to be sending out consistent content until they're ready to buy. And you're going to need a different system for that. So now you're going to have these leads and click up and you're going to have your marketing system, right? Active campaign or whatever else you choose. And those two things are not going to talk to each other. Or if they do, it's going to be a pain in the ass and a bunch of zaps, right? So at that point, system's going to break. This is one reason why we implement an active campaign is because it has a sales CRM and it has a marketing CRM. Those two things are in the same tool. They talk together. You can seamlessly automate from one to the other. Maybe one of your marketing leads that's been sitting on your list for a while is like, oh, I'm going to go register for this live workshop or this webinar that you're doing. And suddenly they become like a sales opportunity, right? They watch your webinar, they book a call. Now they're a sales opportunity. And guess what? They're in the same system. So now we can automate. You know what? This person is now in your sales pipe pipeline. And now you can see their entire history of communication, the, the emails they've opened, the things that they've clicked on, how engaged they've been with your system. You can see that all in one place. And you're not going to get that when you try to separate and you use these other tools that are supposed to be for project management. Project management, let's just do some definitions here. Project management tools are for determining who does what and by when. Okay. Okay. Project management tools are for determining who does what and by when. They are not databases. And if you try to treat them as a database, you're going to start running into limitations and then you're going to end up calling the ambulance. We don't want that. So <clears throat> how do you avoid that? Well, you use a tool where if you're not, if you're not going to be on the tool that you know you're going to end up on, again, that's why I suggested Airtable. Airtable is a database. You can easily export all of your data from that into a real CRM when the time comes. I have a colleague that I know who um, has been needing a CRM for a while and she's been taking all of her sales call notes in Apple Notes on her phone, <laughs> right? Seemed great at the time until you want to hire a sales team, until you want your team to be able to see what conversations have you been having with people and now she is manually having to import, you know, copy and paste those notes into a real CRM. Didn't have to be that way. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, y'all have any questions? Um, we had a couple people on live. Thanks Scott for your question. Um, <clears throat> I just want to come on and talk about this because, you know, you might decide that you want to go towards the train tracks, right? But you're not going to do it uninformed on my watch. So I'm not here to tell you like you have to do anything. I'm telling you from my 10 years of experience building websites, doing marketing automation um, and digital marketing and working with all kinds of tools under the sun and helping all kinds of clients that there are paths that I've seen people go down that never lead to a good place. <laughs> Okay. So I'm just trying to give you the knowledge so that you can make an informed decision. And if you decide right now, you know, fuck it, I'm going to do what I'm going to do because it's DIY scrappy time. And this is what's working for me. And you know, you're going to pay for it on the back end. Cool. Right. You're a grown up. make your own decision. <laughs> but I just want you to know. Um, let's see. Um, I don't think there's, I don't think there's really much else to say that there probably is, but if there is, I'll say it over on my private cat podcast. Um, what I will tell you is that, um, if this is something that you're working on in your business, right? If you have reached the point where, you know, things are working, right? Automation. Oh, let me clear this up too. Automation is not meant to fix things that are broken. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe I have to say that, but people come to me and I'm like, what do you think your biggest problem is? I need automation. And they've just told me that their sales process isn't working. Their marketing process isn't working. And yet they want to automate. If you automate crap, you're going to get automated crap. 
Okay. So automation is not the answer to fixing your marketing problems. When you want to need, when you want to think about automation is when things are working, but you are working too hard to make them work, right? When there's manual tasks that you're doing, when there's manual tasks that your team is doing and people say to me like, well, I can't afford to hire you because I have a big team and I have a lot of payroll. Great. Let's stop paying them to do manual labor that robots can take over instead. And let's have them do more sales activities or help your clients and improve your retention and get more referrals, right? If you are paying your team and that's the reason why you're like, oh, I can't automate because I've got to pay this payroll. Well, great. Let's make your people more efficient and more effective in your business. So automation takes your processes that are effective, that are working, and it makes them more efficient. And so the time to think about that is when things are working and, but you're like, here's, here's a sign that you need to start thinking about this yesterday is things are working, but you can't even bear the idea of selling more or scaling more because you think about how much more work that is going to mean for you and or your team. If that is a thought or a feeling that you're having, that means it's time to start automating and you want to come talk to us. And in fact, let me just put this up here now. Um, So we have a program, it's called CRM to sales. And what we do is I looked at the market last year and I realized people are actually not using automation nearly to the extent that they could, right? And this was a feeling that I had. It was something we were talking about in the automation service provider community. And so I started to go out and talk to people and I started to audit people's systems. And I'm like, hey, let me get your active campaign login. Let me see what's going on in there. And by and large, I was correct. People, it's the equivalent of, you know, you buy a $5,000 DSLR camera with a 200 millimeter lens. And then you just pick it up in your living room and take pictures of your cat. That's kind of how people were using active campaign. And you can go over to our YouTube channel. If you're wondering like, what is this active campaign thing? Why does she keep harping on it? What can it do? It can do all kinds of things. You can build a complete marketing and sales system and have 90% of it automated. And those are the kinds of systems that we build for our clients. So You can go over to our YouTube channel. Um, I will stick the link up here for a second. Um, That's our YouTube channel. Um, We've got a bunch of different videos, you know, five to 10 minute videos specifically about active campaign and not just the features that it can do, but why you should even care. Like what should you do with them? What are the benefits to you? So go check that out on our YouTube channel. But if you know, you're like, I don't, I'm not ready for YouTube university. This is not what I should be spending my time on. Then go over to CRM to sales and book a call to get on my calendar and talk about how we can automate your marketing, your sales, and your onboarding. Those are the three areas where we do marketing automation for folks. And there's three parts to it. There is the audit phase where we look at everything that's going on now and we map it out. Then there's the optimized phase where we build out a marketing engine or we build out sales processes and we automate the things that are going on in there that can be automated. And then there's maintain where, you know, a lot of times it's like we build people will build this system and then they'll hand it over and be like, okay, good luck. We're not going to do that, right? We can maintain that system. I just got off a call with a client today and we set up her system. We migrated her over from MailChimp. And now she every month sends us um, a, a request in the support portal and says, here's all my emails for the month. You know, please document them. Or she'll say, hey, I've got a new lead magnet. Um, she just did this, actually. She's got a new lead magnet. So we created a new um, automation to be a follow up specifically for that lead magnet. And one of the things that we do is we will, um, you know, I'm not leaving you out here to figure out like, oh, what should I ask for, right? There's no reason that you should know what to ask for. So one of the things that we do is we send out an autom- uh, an email every month where I'm suggesting new high value automations that you should have in your business. Um, and so that's things like sales sequences. That's things like automations that will watch for people who are really, really engaged or doing important things on your website. And then we can automate the follow-up or automate notifying your team so that you don't have to lose those sales because people are engaged and they're doing buying signals all the time and they're invisible. You can't see it. Um, So that's just part of what we do. Head on over to the page, book a call. Um, You can go over to our website and check out the services page if you want, you know, the lowdown on what all is included, but I just need y'all to 
to plan and think ahead a little bit and stop making decisions just for right now. People make these decisions and they think, well, this is what's going to work for me right now. And they don't think about their business, you know, a year, two years, three years from now. So I need you to get with future you, the one that you want to be a millionaire or the one that you want to have, you know, a team of five or 10 people or the one who wants to have a hundred clients. And I need you to start making decisions at, as that person, because that's really what has to happen is you're going to have to make those decisions and they're going to be hard because you are where you are right now and you know where you want to be. And in order to get there, you got to become that person. So if you're ready, go, go to the link. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a comment, share it with somebody who needs to hear it. Okay. We've got two openings right now for clients that we want to onboard in May. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, she's got my number. <laughs> she's reading me for filth. I'm having all these problems. Go to the link, get on my calendar, and I'll talk to you guys soon.